Hey, how are you guys doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Super excited to be here uh, this evening with you today. So we have got a very hot topic today. You guys know how much I love Wendy Williams and uh, love to say, how are you doing? I don't want to steal her thing and get uh, in trouble for that, but hopefully you guys are having a great day. So I'm going to start with some questions to help you think about kind of what's going on in your business. And if these things is sort of sound like you, what I'd like you to do is type a, you know, yes, me. Um, if you catch this in the replay, certainly I'd like you to touch this, right? You know, if you, what I want you to think about today as we get ready to start is what task are you working on in your business right now? Many of you may be working on building a website. Is that something that you're doing? Let me know. Are you, are you designing trips, right? Are you getting quotes and you're designing trips, right? But you're not getting paid. Maybe you're building your website and you're not getting paid, right? Maybe you're talking to people about travel. You're introducing yourself to people and letting them know that you are a travel agent. Maybe you're screaming at the, you know, at the, so to speak, mountaintop and letting people know that you're a travel agent but that's not getting you paid either, right? Maybe you are posting on social media, you know, maybe you're posting one, two times a day, maybe every single day, maybe you're showing up live, but is that getting you paid, right? And then, the, the, you know, the other thing is maybe, you know, during this pandemic, you've taken a bunch of supplier trainings, right? So you can get yourself prepped up, but all of those activities that you're working on are they getting you paid? That's what we're going to talk about today. What gets you paid as a travel professional? But before we start, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. I come to you every single week talking all things launching, operating, and having a successful travel business. Super excited for you all to be here to, uh, today with me. And we're going to talk about you know how to avoid working in in your travel business for free or for minimum wage, right? Are you guys excited about that? Like I was talking, you know, I, I actually had another topic planned uh, for this week. And then I was talking to someone uh, earlier in the week. It must've been Monday or Saturday or some one of those days. And um, I asked a simple question. And the question that I asked simply was, you know, are you charging fees? And they said, Yes, I am. And and that person said it confidently. And I was like, okay, well, what are you charging? And they said $25. And not only are they charging $25, they reimburse the $25 if the person books a trip. And that's pretty common, actually. I have a, I've had a lot of people uh, tell me that, that they charge $25 per person. So maybe $50 uh, for a couple and you know, people seem really proud about that. And you know what? I'd rather you charge $50 than no dollars because some of you are charging nothing, right? So that's just in the form of agency fees. But before we jump into agency fees, what I'd like to do is talk about what actually gets you paid in this business, right? Some of you are new and you may think, oh, well, the only way I can get paid is by this. So let's bust the bubble about what actually gets you paid in the travel industry. The number one way you get money as a travel professional, right, in this industry is one, you are getting commissions from a supplier. And so what I mean by that is you've decided to book with sandals, for example, and by virtue of you booking with sandals, you are going to get 10% commission of uh, the value exclusive of taxes, resort fees, and all of that kind of stuff, right? So commissions is the number one reason way that we get paid in this industry. The number two way is, is if you're smart, you use a very select few suppliers, and some of those suppliers have bonuses, they have incentives, they run promotions for travel agents that get you additional commissions or bonus checks, right? So that's another 
another way. The other way that you make money in this business is by charging service. You have service fees that you charge your clients and you should be receiving some sort of revenue stream for that. You can charge for such things as designing, designing trips for people. You can charge for such things as, you know, when people cancel name changes, you can have a consultation fee, all of that is wrapped up into service revenue. So hopefully that makes sense, right? Then the other thing is, is that you could actually create training and you can be a consultant, right? You can, maybe if you specialize in wedding destinations, you are on site, you charge a fee for being on site and handling all the particulars of the person's wedding. Um, if you're an event planner, that kind of thing. So you can do some, what I call, it's just a little bit more above service revenue. It's consulting um, revenue, which is sort of, I kind of think of that a little bit higher than just regular service fees, right? And or you could train, right? Like I train, I'm a trainer, I'm a coach, and I train people how to be successful travel agents. Well, you could train people, let's say an example of you being a wedding destination special, you could train brides to be or couples to be on how to plan their own wedding and you could make revenue from that training, right? That's another way. All right, I got two more uh, ways. Affiliate, right? So let's say you partner with uh, a vendor. Let's say you partner with a bridal uh, company who, who sells gowns and you refer clients to them and maybe they give you some sort of uh, revenue for referral. That's also referred to as an affiliate. So you could also do that as an affiliate. All right, and then the last way that you can make money in this business, and some of you are doing this, maybe you're a recruiter for travel agents and you, or maybe you have your own agency and you're a host and you get residual or override income for um, your sub agent. So let's say your agent uh, makes money and they get commission and you get a percentage of that commission, right? So that consider that to be override. There are some companies that have uh, have that already built up in their system. Uh, some host agencies that are primarily recruiting, you could also set that up in your own company. But those are primary ways that, that you can make revenue, right? But unfortunately, many of you are working on activities that don't directly relate to the items that I just said, right? Let me say that again. Many of you are working on activities that do not relate directly to the way you make money. So essentially, every activity that you work on that's not directly related to you making money is you're working for free. That's one. The other way that you're working for free or for minimum wage is maybe you are charging a fee for some of these activities, or maybe you, you know, for booking travel, maybe you have service revenue and you're doing it, but you're charging a very low amount, like $25, right? So what I want to do is I want to break that down for you today, right? So let's say you're charging $25 per person. You have two people and what you do, it takes you a couple of hours to, you know, design the trip, go and do the research for the trip, go to the vendor site, look at, you know, prices, put together three packages. Then you've got to put it in your system. Maybe you don't have a system. Maybe you do whatever that is, but then assembling that to present to the client, then sitting down with the client, all of that, you know, I've had people tell me, oh, it doesn't take me any time at all to do quotes, right? Okay, maybe it doesn't. But some of you it may take you a couple hours, maybe take you three hours. But I'm talking about from start to finish, how long does it take you to meet with your client, put together the quotes or the options, review the quotes and options with them, and then decide with them if they need any changes, if they've got to go back, how long is that process? Some words, maybe 20, you know, four hours, maybe three to four hours. Two, if you're really, really efficient and you're, you know, you've got this down, you're working with the same suppliers, maybe you're doing the same trips, it's two hours, right? So if you take $25 divided by two or $50, you know, $50 divided by two, right? It takes two hours, that's $25 an hour, right? If it takes you three hours, you're dividing that by, uh, um, uh, you know, three divided by 50. If it takes you four hours, it's that divided by 50, right? So the problem is, is when you charge something as little as $25 an hour, right? Every minute that you spend gets diluted and you ultimately can, 
get to be working for minimum wage, right? And then if you're applying that to the trip, right, you're refunding that money toward the trip, then you're effectively did all of that work for free, right? Now, what I want you to do is now think about how long and how much effort it takes for you to manage the client, right? To set up email reminders, right? Make sure that they, they've they got uh, the, the information that they need, right? Payment management, right? Trip management. And then when they're on trip, what if they've got changes? All of the time and effort it takes to manage the record, right? When you take your commission, is it really worth more than minimum wage? Are you getting more than minimum wage? Some of you will say, yes, absolutely. I'm getting more minimum wage, right? But many of you, right, haven't even done the numbers to determine what your average commission should be and what you should be getting such that you are excited about what you're doing in terms of the revenue that you receive in your business, right? So I want you to just think about that. Like, so if your average commission is $300, right? Some of you guys are doing cruises with Carnival and your average, you know, commission is three to $400, right? Because Carnival is kind of on the low end, right? It's not an, a luxury uh, cruise line, right? You know, if you're booking resorts, you're getting 10%, then you're splitting that with your host agency. And when you add up all of the time that you're working, right? Are you making minimum wage or working there for free, right? Many of you are, right? You're working either for really low dollars or you're working for free in the case where you're booking, you're doing quotes and you're not receiving any revenue. Well, we want to stop that today, right? I want you to really stop and think about one, what activity are you working on? And is it directly tied to making money, right? Is it busy work? Is it work that you think is sexy because it makes you feel good, but it's not really making you any money, right? And even if you are working on the correct activities, are you charging your worth, right? So let's dive into that. Are you excited about that? All right, so I'm gonna give you three tips today on what you need to do to avoid working for free in your travel business. Number one tip is stop working and doing work for free period. Stop it. <laughs> like that's the first thing. Acknowledge that you have a problem and then stop doing it. Right. So what do I mean by that? Cause you're like, no, 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 no. I got to work on, you know, I got to work on my website, right. That's directly tied to revenue. And the reality is it is not right. I, and, and I really, I really hate to bust people's bubble or their thought when it comes to, um, website work because everybody knows that you need to have a website right so you're trained i don't know from from infant entrepreneur into mature entrepreneur you need to have a website and so what we do when we start and we launch our business is we immediately we go out and do two things that most people do they go get business cards and they they figure out you know they sign up and they they're thinking about how they can get their website up and running, right? And and if you're with some host agencies, those hate host agencies give you a website and that makes you even feel even more warm and fuzzy. And then you're spending hours and hours and hours working on this dreaded website, right? And then it's done. And then I say to you, by virtue of you creating this website, do you instantly get clients from that? And the answer is no, you don't, right? The reality is, is that your website and even your business cards only work if they if your website is in front of the people that you want it to be in front of, right? And so how do you do that? That means you have to be getting your website traffic. You have to be driving traffic to your website. So this concept of they will, I will build it and they will come is bullshit, right? Frankly, it's bullshit. Like you can build a website all day. It could be the most beautiful website in the entire world, all about your travel agency, talking about how you're the bomb.com. But unless you have a strategy to get that website in front of your ideal client, you effectively have wasted your time. If you've got business business cards and you are not actively passing them out, right? To your ideal client, you've effectively wasted your money on business cards, right? Building a website in and of itself is not a direct path to sales, right? I want to say that again, building a website is not a direct path to sales. So what we want to be doing is we want to be working on activities that are direct path to sales. And you may ask, well, what is that, right? 
I just gave you what's going to get you sales. What's going to get you sales? Your number one way to get sales is through commissions from suppliers. So how do you get those commissions from suppliers? You have to be booking trips and your clients have to be going on the trips for you to get the commission, right? So what activities would you need to be working on in order for them to be booking trips, right? You need to be talking to clients. You need to be booking trips, right? So you're, I know you're, you're probably saying, well, Sunday, that's Duh, like I know that, right? I know I need to be booking trips, right? But you're working on all these activities that don't lead to bookings, right? The only way that you're booking is if you're talking to clients. So the activities that you need to be focused on are those that are going to get you talking to clients, right? So what are some of those things, right? So the number two things uh, that you want to do is start working on activities that are going to, uh, that are directly tied to getting you paid right? So let's, let me give you some examples of that, right? If you book, if booking is going to get you commission, right? Uh, well, let's rephrase that. If a trip that a client goes on is going to get you paid, right? What do you need to do? You need to be booking trips. Well, how do you book trips? You need to be giving quotes, right? Then what do you do to get quotes, right? That means you need to be offering your services and introducing yourself to people who want quotes, who ultimately want trips, right? You see how I backed into that? So those should be your primary activities. Those should be activities. You should have systems in place that ensure that that direct stream of activity and revenue generating work is happening on a regular daily basis. And if you're smart, you're doing that on autopilot, right? I am meeting strangers every day that allow me to have conversations, that allow me to book discovery calls, that allow me to enroll people into my business on autopilot every day, right? That is what I refer to as a client attraction system. Do you have a client attraction system, right? I want you, if you're listening to this, I want you to type in the comments, right? Do you have a way to automatically meet strangers in your business and start a relationship? Do you have an automatic way to book clients into your discovery call process, right? So that you can take requirements in. Do you have a process for that? Do you have a process? You know, one of the things that I tell people too is I can tell how successful your business based on the number of discovery calls on your calendar right now. If you don't have discovery calls and if you don't call them discovery calls, I don't know what you call them in your business, but if you don't have that on your books, if you don't have a process by which to get people on your books right now, I already know that your sales process is broken, right? And the reality is, is when I talk to you about the fact that you need to have a direct activity in the thing that's going to get you sales and you don't, that means something is broken. So we want to fix that, right? So that's the number one thing that you want to do is you want to you want to stop working on things, particularly if you're new in this business now. Now, if you already have your client attraction system built out and you know you're getting you're meeting strangers, you're having discovery calls on a regular basis, right? And maybe you're still not getting sales, then there's probably something that we can tweak in that process. But for sure, if you don't have a way to attract strangers, new leads in your business that you're ideal client, right? You have a way to relate to them. That's the only thing you should be working on. And website is not one of them, right? I, I you know, I see, I, I see people, I talk to people every day, right? Because my calendar is got discovery calls on it all day, every single day, right? We have an entire team, a whole process that's built around that, right? That's what we want for your travel business. And the reality is, is that if you aren't if you don't have that process and you're working on anything other than that process, right, you're not going to get the kind of sales that you want, period. End of story. There's no magic to it. There's not like, you know, I don't need a crystal ball and say, oh, what do I need to, you know, Sunday, you know, what do I need to do? You need, you need a process by which to introduce yourself regularly, relate and converge, right? That's what you need. All right. So then the number three. So literally, I've snuck two in here already. And so just in case you may have missed it, the number one tip right now for you to stop working for free is to stop working on things that do not directly tie to getting you paid. I just gave you one, two, three, four, five, six ways we get paid. If you're not working on any one of those six items that I just gave you that are not, your activities are not tied directly to one of those six items, you do not have a consistent way to get paid. 
right? So if you're not booking booking quotes, right? If you're not getting paid for those quotes, that's one way. If you're not, you know, doing discovery calls so that you can book, you're not you're not getting paid. If you don't have partnerships where you can actually have affiliate income, you're not getting paid. If you don't have a training program, you don't have uh, you're not consulting, right? You're not getting paid, right? If you don't have service revenue, you're not getting paid. If you're not talking to your clients every single day or prospective clients, you're not getting paid, right? Any other activity that you're working on that doesn't relate to that right now is a waste of time and you will continue to work for free, right? So let's stop that. That's the number one. The number two is stop giving away your services for free, right? So the primary service as a travel professional that you have and the primary asset that you have is your relationship and your knowledge, right? And you are giving that away for free or pennies on the dollar, right? If you're charging $25 to $50 for a quote, you're giving it away near for free. So I want you to stop that, right? You know, so some of you may be asked like, well, what's a good number? Like, what should I, what should I be charging? Right. And I tell my clients, they should be no less than 150, 150 to $200. And depending on the type of uh, niche you're in, you know, upwards from there, right. You know, uh, my clients, uh, none of them are charging less than 150 for uh, designing. Right. And you should be in the same way. And that's like per couple, right? That's not, uh, you know, that's not for a group trip. That's for a couple to design, right? And so that's the starting place. So the problem is, is you don't feel comfortable doing it, right? So we're going to talk about that in number three. But before we go to number three, what I say is stop giving away your services for free, right? And what you need to do, um, and the only time, let me, because I wrote this down, right? I'm looking down on my piece of paper because I always drop these little notes, right? I wrote, stop giving, giving your, stop giving and working for free unless it gets you more customer conversations. Let me say that again. Stop giving away your services and your knowledge unless it gets you more client conversations. Right. And so what do I mean by that? What I mean simply by that is I give away my knowledge, right, in the form of these types of environments, right? But and I do that because it adds value to my community, right? There's a process by which I uh, get to connect to my community, and it gets me more conversations, right? Same thing for you. So let's say you have a Facebook group, right? And maybe you show up and you're giving valuable content, right? Right? So you're giving a piece of your knowledge, you're giving value to your community, right? In the exchange for more conversations, right? Because conversations is what leads to sales. Does that make sense? Let me say that again. Conversations lead to sales. So if you're not having conversations with your ideal client, you're not having sales, right? So the more conversations you can have, the more sales you can make, right? So only give away such knowledge that is going to lead to more conversations, but be strategic about the knowledge that you give away, right? Don't give away the whole, the whole, the whole thing, right? You know, I'm trying to find a, a, a cute word, but don't give away the whole thing, right? So what I give you, you know, many people there, you know, they, I get some people who are, who don't understand sort of the whole marketing process and the whole thing, how things work, right? You know, if you're in this group and you are just in this group to get free information, right? The details of how to get all of that, I don't, I don't give that out in these calls, right? Or these I reserve that for my paying clients, right? So the, the the five steps on how to get it done, right? If you want to learn how to do Facebook ads and all the nuances that it takes to be able to drive traffic to your website, right? We teach that inside of uh, Travel Passions to Profit, right? I'm going to tell you that Facebook is the cat's meow, but how to run it and all of that is what's reserved for paying clients, right? But I show up every single week and give you enough information for you to be dangerous, right? Same thing with your clients. Let's say you're a wedding and I, I love wedding destination specialists as an example, because it's, it's easy for most people to understand, right? It's not a complicated niche, right? You know who your client is. You want people who are engaged. You want to get married, right? And they want to get married in some luxurious place or some exotic place that's non-traditional, right? So if I have a group and I show up weekly inside of my group, what do you think I'm doing, right? 
I'm showing up and I'm talking about all the great destinations that they can get to. I'm talking about tips on what they need to consider when uh, thinking about getting married, right? Right. I'm not telling them all the 15 steps that they got to do, how to review the contracts. I'm not doing all that. I'm giving them information that they need, right? So that they can trust me, trust that I'm the expert. And when they're ready to make that move, they make the move, right? And let's say uh, I offer a training program, right? I create a training program for my brides to be, right? So I probably do a webinar on that information, right? So I want you to be super, super clear about when I say, right, you don't give away your assets unless it's going to give you more conversations, but be strategic about the information that you give. Now, when you do quotes for free, that's giving away your assets. You're giving away that relationship, the information and the, all the perks that you put together, you're giving that away for free. If you don't charge a fee period, end of story. I don't really want you in my inbox telling me why, you know, you think you're justified in giving away your services for free. If you want to work for free until you, until the cows come home, that's you. But it's my personal mission to make sure that every travel professional that really is doing this, not as a side hustle, but as their primary income, that they're maximizing their revenue. And the way to do that is don't give away your assets for free. So I always tell you, um, I will always tell you this, right? Um, new newbies will tell me, I don't feel comfortable giving, you know, charging because I don't know yet what I'm doing. And I say, well, shame on you. You should learn how you should learn you should you're doing. You should, you should expend your effort in learning the craft of your business, right? Don't jump and not be comfortable with it, right? On the job training for free, doctors don't give away their services for free, right? When they open up their practice, they're charging. Um, you know, you don't know if they've been one year out of med school or five years out of med school, right? They are charging for their services. Now I understand they go through a residency period, right? And they're working their ass off, blah, blah, blah. My point is, is you're a professional, right? And whatever training program you need to go through to get to that comfort level, go through it, you know, bite the bullet, go through it and be done with it and then charge your worth, period, right? Don't don't jump out here on these internet streets, you know, start using people's lives as your guinea pig and then not charging and then get pissed off that people don't book with you, right? That's your fault. Nobody, nobody is responsible for your business model, but you, you decide to give away your services for free. So stop it. You have the, the ability to control it and stop it. There's no body government body dictating that we can or cannot charge services now granted if you're in the five states you know that require a seller travel those there is a body of, for those five states and there's some things that you need to do right if you don't know what i'm talking about you need to check out my agency fees training um but you know in the other you know 45 states where most of you live right you're not governed by any sort of legislation government that tells you what you can and cannot do in the fee space so do what you need to do stop giving it away for free again our biggest assets as travel professionals is our knowledge and our relationship with suppliers so don't give it away assign a value to your work change your mindset period end of story All right so i'm going to say that one more time i want you to assign a value to your work now mind you i didn't say i want you to determine what your hourly rate should be. I want you to assign a value to your work, right? What do you do? What do you provide in your services? And what is the value of that work, right? And I don't want you to continue to minimize your your position as a travel professional specializing in whatever you specialize in, right? So, um, you know, I want to give you some examples, right? We are on what I want to say is the brink of an, a travel explosion, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, travel is certainly opening up now that people are vaccinated and uh, people are getting shots. So, you know, more and more people are feeling more comfortable to uh, travel. I think uh, 
I think I read somewhere that I don't know if it's at the federal level or state level that, you know, if you're with a bunch of vaccinated people, you guys can congregate together. Right. You know, I've been on I've been on planes at least in the last year, two times. And both of those flights were full going and coming. Right. And that trend is just going to go up. So the question that I always say to you is, are you prepared for the bubble that's about to burst in the travel industry? Um, And what I mean by that is we are advocates, right? No time like now are we able to demonstrate and discuss the value that we bring to the table as advocates for our clients, right? And so what is the value of that? And what I mean by advocate, if you don't know what that means, then you need to do some homework relative to this business, right? If any of you were active travel professionals last March, you know exactly what advocacy means, right? You know exactly what it means to, in the middle of a crisis, uh, rearrange travel travel arrangements, get uh, refunds, get uh, people home safely, right? Uh, Make sure that your clients are protected in the know and they understand what's going on, right? We are those people, right? And there is value in that. There is value in advocacy, right? So what is the value that you've assigned to yourself, right? And, and, and I don't mean just on the fact when they book, right? And I, and and I'm going to say it again, it's not just on the value after the booking. It's the value that you assign to your work when you're designing, right? So why give that away for $50, right? I don't know any any doctor, any professional, and I'm talking professional, right? Who is charging you know, 50 bucks, right? Now it may cut, like, let me tell you this. I met with a lawyer. I met with a travel, not a travel. I met with a trade lawyer uh, last year because I'm in the process of trademarking online travel boss. And um, she charged me $50 just to meet with her, right? She didn't do anything yet. She didn't even like, I don't even think, I think for me to even fill out her form, it was $50 just, just to meet with her, right? Just to meet with her. She's the bomb.com, right? She's recommended all over the place, right? Why, right? Not to mention then what it charged once she said, okay, for her to start doing the work, what I had to pay just for her to start doing the work, right? You are no different, right? And the only reason why you think that you're no different is because of your mindset about what you do. Don't tell me that, oh, I, you know, I was in a group last year, maybe this is in 2019, and some lady was typing in the group comments and said, you know, I think that the commission that I get paid is enough and I don't charge because, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't want my clients to pay. I'm like, bullshit, right? Why not? Right? Why shouldn't your clients pay for your knowledge that you've acquired, your your skill set that you have in your relationship? Every other professional that has specialized skills, specialized knowledge, specialized relationships char- charge, why would we? Because we hadn't in the last 15 years, right? Well, whose fault is that? Yours, because I just now educated you that you should be charging, right? There's no reason that we should not receive compensation for the skills that we keep up to date, the knowledge that we keep up to date and the know-how and the relationships that we have. That's valuable. So the only way that you're going to get paid for it is to assign a value to it. And I don't mean some little squiggly value. I'm talking value, right? If you charge low, people have a tendency to think that your services are low, right? And it's psychology, (laughs) believe it or not. It's psychology. When you charge more, people have a tendency to think that you are worth more, right? You need to start to understand that psychology and assign some value to it. I'm not going to tell you what you should charge. I tell you what average price my clients are charging for designing trips, right? And again, that's only part of their service revenue. You know, I've got uh, different niches uh, can command different uh, service fee structure, right? But my point is sit down and think about what you should be charging, okay? All right, so those are the three things. So before we go, what I want to do is I want to just talk to you about an example of one of my clients and kind of what, you know, what what was the situation, right? So before she was working with me, so I've got actually two examples. So before one of my clients was working with me, she was, you know, she's really shy, 
she was really shy. She, she, I don't, I think she charged $25 a person if, if, if she charged that at all. Um, you know, she was very scared to charge a, a fee, right? She was of the opinion, like many of you who aren't charging fees. I'm new in the business. I shouldn't charge. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a little scared, right? And um, she didn't have conversions, right? She had a lot of people who were getting quotes from her, but they weren't booking, right? Does that sound familiar? Is that something that you're experiencing where, you know, maybe you've just launched your business and people are asking you for quotes and then they get the quotes and then you're like, which way do they go? Where are they? You know, I did all this work. Where are you? Right. So this was my client before her and I started working together. Right. And, and the, the, the other thing that was really her story is that she didn't really understand even how to increase. She didn't understand how to introduce the increase to her existing base and even for future. She didn't even know how to have that conversation about how to introduce the price, right? And so she decided to uh, join the program. She decided she joined last year. And effectively, the outcome of that was that she was able to not only charge confidently, she now charges 150 for uh, custom quotes. She also does uh, group bookings and she charges a fee for people who buy into her group packages, but she's effectively monetized her Facebook group. So not only in the program was she able to create a Facebook group and when she started, she was super shy. Um, and, you know, I remember when she started, uh, you know, she's super shy. She would look down. She didn't really want to come live. And and now she's like killing the game, right? She shows up in her group once a week, sometimes twice. She brings on guests. She's talking about her resort. She's got uh, guest speakers talking about her resort. And she's selling travel in the middle of a pandemic. Not only is she selling travel in the middle of a pandemic, she's charging fees at $150 per trip, per couple, in the middle of a pandemic, right? So this is what that our program was able to do for her. It was able to allow her to charge four times what she normally was charging. It's allowing her to get revenue booked. So I'm not even talking like, you know, she's booking stuff for 2022. She's booking people trips right now, right? She's got this whole, you know, product, the offering that she has. She's got different theme types of uh, services that she offers inside of her group. And she's doing all of that inside of her group. She's excited confident about her value. She's charging for that value. And she is the expert in the space that she's carved out in the travel business. Wouldn't that be something you'd want for yourself? So, you know, what I, what I say to, I wrote down here, I was like, her confidence is through the roof and it puts a smile on my face because I really enjoy, you know, uh, listening to my testimony, listening to my clients testimonials. And then I also enjoy, right. I had somebody, one of my clients, uh, come in my inbox last week and they were like, you know, Sunday, I'm sorry. I sort of dropped off, off of our group. We've got a, a special group for our clients. And she's like, you know, I haven't been participating in the group. Um, but you know, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, this, this year so far, I've already made $63,000 in gross sales and travel, right? Again, in the middle of a pandemic, right? You know, I can tell you, you know, testimonial after testimonial about how people are able to take, you know, this fear, this overwhelm and transfer that overwhelm into action, into sales and to success, right? But I'm not going to bore you. But what the point that I wanted to make with that, that example is, is that, you know, the only way to do it is to do it, right? There's no other way. There's no other way you can get around it. The only way to do it is to accept that you need to do it and then damn it, do it, right? So, you know, that's, 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 those are my tips for, for you all today. So, you know, this is just an example of many people that I've talked, uh, that, that I work with personally inside of our program and inside of our inner circle. And really the, the biggest thing that I want you to take away from today's conversation is if you want to stop working for free and if you want to stop working for minimum uh, wage, Focus on the right activities, right? And make sure that you have some sort of client attraction system that's going to allow you to get in front of your ideal client on autopilot such that you can be focused on those activities that lead to sales. End of story, right? And the, 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 the additional message I want to say is that having a client attraction system works. 
period, right? It gets you focused on the right thing. It gets you focused on um, having more conversations, right? Because you can't get to sales without conversations. The more conversations you have, the more sales you have, right? So um, my question to you at the end of you know today's training is, what will you have after your work is done today? right? Have you been working on the right activities today? And if you haven't, what changes are you going to make? All right. This is Sunday. Let, let, you know, I got, I got, I'm almost, I almost let the cat out of the bag. So I just want to let you know that we've got a major announcement coming tomorrow. Um, so I want you to look out for it inside of our group. I'm not going to tell you about it today, but look out for the post tomorrow. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we can make this happen. But what I want to say is thank you for joining me live. I've been, it's been a pleasure talking with you all. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Just leave a comment here, tag my name at you can uh, tag either one of our uh, clients uh, support specialists, that would be Jalen or Jomar. What I do want you to do, though, is check your messages because they may have already reached out and their role is really to connect you to resources inside of this group. So if you have not heard you know, if you haven't checked your messages, your message requests in Facebook, do that because as soon as you come in the group and if you've given us permission, we are reaching out to make sure that you are connected. So, uh, so somebody says that they would love to work with me. I would uh, absolutely love to have uh, work with you. One of our client success uh, uh, people will reach out to you uh, today, uh, send you a message and uh, help you uh, connect you with me um, and all of that. It's been a pleasure. This is Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. I come to you every single week talking all things launching, operating, and marketing a successful, profitable travel business. It is my hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. Do not forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.